steps. I'm so <laughs> I know that I, this is round two, but I'm actually kind of glad that we get to do it all over again. I, yeah, I actually think it's going to be, yeah. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, this is Sarah and I'm Paige and we're here from Two Pearls in a Pod. We've had a rebrand. <laughs> we've rebranded thanks to Sarah who very cleverly came up with the name. Accidentally, bit accidentally, but look, we love it. Yeah, love it. I'm actually feeling like this thing is like poking out of it. I kind of like it. Oh, Looks really? Cute. Yeah. Okay, I'll embrace the poke out. It's because I haven't sewn it down yet. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. yeah. We're not there yet. Um, so, yes, we are meeting on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. It's good to be here. Um, and we're back again to chat about our knitting. Um, this is the second time we filmed this. We tried to do it yesterday and realised that we it stopped after like a minute or something and we didn't even know. To be fair, it actually, you know how sometimes it's, you know, we haven't pressed record or something. This wasn't our fault. We tried to be <laughs> extra tech savvy and do like a fun thing. We tried to be clever. It didn't work. It didn't work. Um, Lessons were learned. It's fine. We're here now. And actually it's for the best because the circumstances are a lot better. Um, so we had to record it again. We're back for round two because we tried to do something a bit clever yesterday and somehow the video turned itself off. Yeah, but like conveniently a minute in, so we thought that we were recording, it was great, it was working beautifully. Um, and then we just talked to ourselves for an hour, for a good hour. And we were like, great, that's great, that's done. And we were feeling so good about it. We were like, yes, that was so much energy, fun. that was so much fun. We talked about so many cool things and alas, it didn't record. And this is the other thing we talked about, which I thought was quite funny. If this was just me by myself and I had that experience alone, that would have been a full mental breakdown moment. I would have been like, oh, everything sucks. I hate it. But I think we would try to like stay strong for each other. So we would try to be like, it's like you know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It, was like, a good, it was a good trial. It was a, yeah, it was, it was a little mock. It was fine. It was, you know, we're not, do we're not doing it anyway for that reason. You know, that's not the purpose. We're just here for fun. So but I actually think it's for the best because I think this is going to be better this time around. Totally. Who we got? Vishra. Yeah? Special We're recording. Vishra. Do you want to meet Vishra? <laughs> <laughs> We're recording our vid. Oh, sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, I'm in here. We're going to pick up after now that um, we've stopped chatting with Vishra. Um, maybe like a what are we drinking? What are we drinking? What are we drinking in? I feel like, oh, firstly, we're drinking out of Pottery by Paige, i.e. me. <laughs> um, and then I think these are the same ones we showed last time. I'm no, so sorry if so. Yours is, but I think mine is different because this one is my favourite. That's probably, yeah, one of my favourites as well. Um, this is a wedding. Um, that's the one. That your favourite? Favourite? Favourite, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I love it. Cute handles. We've been there. I haven't done Pottery in a hot minute though, so. Yeah, I we'll keep wanting to see some ones. new stuff. Once it is, you can show us all. It's just too many hobbies in one go, yeah. you know. But yeah, soon, next time. Yeah. Ooh, cool. Okay. Um, we should go to what from what are we drinking to what are we wearing. Um, oh, and chai. Oh, chai. We're drinking much. Oh, chai. obviously. Obviously. <laughs> um, so I will start because yes. I want to spend more time talking about this <laughs> situation. Um, this is an old knit of mine because I've not got anything any finished objects to show so I was like oh, I'll just put something old on because yeah this is the James jacket by Wool and the Gang and I've made it using their crazy sexy wool um, so it's actually probably one of the things I've had longest in my cupboard like it's one of my oldest makes and it was not pleasant to knit at all um, but the outcome is great. The outcome is fab. Every time you wear that jacket, I eye it off. I also, so. I was very surprised when you said you made it from Wool and the Gang because whenever I see those kits online, I'm kind of like a bit too snobby or something and I just like kind of like don't really pay much attention to it. But I have to say, We Are Knitters has this yarn and corn yarn mm. and oh, like pastel colours, yeah, which yeah, I'm yeah. dying for. But anyway, that's besides the point. Basically, it looks very nice. I, I feel, love the structure. I feel like a badass. Like, also, just like cool. the edges, look how seamless and tidy it is. Hard to and tell can you why. please show everyone the shoulder shaping? Because that's like my favourite bit. Yeah, so it's got like, it's all garter, except it's got a stocking stitch sort of shoulder patch bit here. 
um, and it just creates a really nice cut and I love the colour. I feel, I feel cool. You, you look cool. You look um, very cool. I feel like I'm living my best Melbourne life in this. It's you, like, yeah, you are very Melbourne. Like, epitome of Melbourne, black tights. <laughs> we were joking. I feel like I'm going to repeat all my jokes from my video yesterday, but I said yesterday that she was going to go for a walk around the tan, which is like the most Melbourne thing ever in this outfit. Yes. So, um, but yeah, it was, it's, it's like wearing a rug, like a carpet. It's so thick. Um, and it's just nice. Today is the perfect day for it because it's like not super hot, not super cold. A bit overcast. The core is warm. The core <laughs> is warm. Sarah's favourite thing. The core is warm. But the arms are free. Yes. It's like no one's ever invented the vest or like the sleepover before. They're such, <laughs> they're such great inventions because like you get to stay warm, but your arms don't need to be warm, but I'm, they need mobility. I love how obsessed Sarah is with this concept of the core is warm and the arms are free. Like, it's, it's, it's like, you know, a jumper is so restrictive, like, I, she couldn't possibly. <laughs> Look, I just, I was late to the sleepover slash vest slash, um, yeah, game, and I am here for it. Well, same, honestly. I see them in the shops all the time, and I really, really want one. And then I always say, no, I will not, because it's on my to knit list, and I'm going to knit my <laughs> own. <laughs> and we'll get to that shortly. But, but it makes me want to make more. Yeah, you should. For you should. It's good. Also, like undercoats and stuff. Mm. Like a like a yeah, yeah. It's my little like undercoat carpet. <laughs> Perfect. So thick. Um, I had to take a fair bit of um, stitches out because, and I had to go down quite a few needle sizes because it wasn't getting the tension. And it's a single ply, and so it got really twisted. And I have to every so often like untwist it. Um, oh. It was a huge chore. You're but putting me off. <laughs> I, I wouldn't go into this lightly. It was hard work. No. But it was long enough ago I'm that off I'd it. forgotten. So. I'm already off it. <laughs> I'm done. Intense, no, thank you. <laughs> I do, yeah. It's quite, it's quite unlike everything else I've got. I so think I like I'll just cover. appreciate it on you and that'll be enough for me. Your yeah, best Melbourne life. Um, more importantly, look at this. Okay, look, guys, I finally did it. I finally finished this sweater. This is a Fortune sweater by Petite Knit, of course. I've been knitting it and you guys have seen it in the last few episodes and it's finally done. Um, I'll get up like a little bit, maybe up more in your face because I want to like just appreciate the drape and the length of this is perfect. I mean, I know it's top down, so you'd hope it would be, but <laughs> you'd be surprised. I don't ever do gauge swatches because I'm naughty. And when I block things, they always become a little bit too long. Also, I'm wearing like a funny top under here. So I feel like you maybe can't appreciate the collar situation quite as much. But um, essentially, it's meant to be totally folded down, like on the inside and then tacked, like maybe like a bit more. Like it's like meant like to- Like half length, obviously. And yeah. like double thickness. I feel like I'm really wearing the wrong top for this, but it's meant to be like yeah, quite right. a bit yeah. down. And then when I was making it, I really liked this look. Oh, see now today it looks better this way. I disagree. I think it looks better the way you had it. Like it's classy, but the, the, the half tuck, like this, I... the little tuck. I well, think is best. It's yeah. like the best of both worlds. This is the thing. I found that the half tuck, yeah. ee, the half tuck is like the perfect. It looks structured. It. It's like the like, classiness of the higher neck. Yeah, like the mock neck, right? Yeah, yeah. I like that a lot. So um, I'm going to now that I've tried it on, and I think that that's what I want to go with. I'm going to tuck it down, um, mm. and I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to put some elastic here because it's not stretched out yet. I've only worn it once so far, but I can already tell it will be one that does. And I'm mm. really obsessed with the shape that it's currently in, it's, and I don't want it to change. Perfect. Um, highly would recommend the knit. It is um, super quick. Like when I say super quick, relatively quick considering it's like a four to eight ply, I think. Like I, I think the, what, the you pattern. Did a fingering and a mohair. Yeah, I did a fingering and a mohair, and I think the pattern calls for eight ply. But for me, <laughs> I only recently found out in the knitting world that that four plus two equals eight. I thought four plus two equals six, so you do four plus two plus two. But alas, that's not how it works. That's why everything was getting so chunky and dense. <laughs> anyway, I love how light it is. Mm. Pattern's really easy. These little flower things are really easy to do. The only gripe I had with the pattern was I felt like it doesn't really explain when you get to like doing the arms, for instance, when you start these guys, the little, the little clovers, like when you start the clover, you have to figure that out yourself at a few points. Like it's not, you've got to... 
work work work, work it out from like yeah. your previous one which yeah. it's not a big deal like you can work it out but i really like to be spoon fed my stitches so i That's like it when it tells me well yeah like i wanted to tell me you know for each size okay now knit three and now start your, doing your eyelet but mm -hmm. i had to calculate every time which means a few of them are like one stitch off but you obviously can't tell also i did make a little mistake on the back do you want to see there's one so like cloud missing it. At the top. There's one flower missing. Oh, here. Top back, yeah. I'll show you the audience. Can they see it? Um, sure, yeah. So you know what, okay. guys? Don't care. Proud of myself. I didn't start again when I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> also, I kind of love it because now I know which way is the front and which way is the oh, back yeah, really is. easily. Yes. So I actually really appreciated that. Um, before we move on, what I knitted it with was the Orca Yarn um, ball ply and then the Kremka Sole. What is it? Soul wool, soul wool and silky kit. Yeah. Um, I don't think the creme curve soul wool was anything special apart from the colour. The, oh, apart from the apart color. from the colour was perfect. That's why I chose it. Yeah. The ochre yarn I'm obsessed with. I have told Sarah how obsessed I am with it so many times, and my stash is full of ochre yarn because it's got this really subtle. It's like I don't know. I don't know if you can see. It's got a bit of variegation in it. Um, and it's like subtle enough that it's just it just adds a little bit of interest without it being a stripy yarn yeah um, it's just exactly and it is like it is hand dyed so that's why you do get that and I feel like most of their yarns do that not all the lighter pastel kind of ones do, do. and when they knit up they're so soft it's got like Tibetan, a Tibetan yak and a whole bunch of other things in it it's so, so soft luxe. so luxe um, it's on par with other yarns in terms of price point and yeah, I think it's beautiful. I knit with it a lot. I've bought a lot of it as you guys have probably seen. I think it, the, the lightness and the drape and the effect it has on these beautiful sleeves, which is like the Goldilocks zone in terms of balloon. Like it's not too much, but it's enough that it adds like real classiness. It's a real classy color. I'm obsessed with it. This is also my favorite color in the world. Like this cool tone pink I is my favorite like color. I feel like eternally all of these videos is you wearing lots of bright colors and me in my like neutrals and blacks and dark colors. Um, we are who we are. Look, it's fine. That's why this works. That's something for everyone. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I love a pastel. Like all my, like most of my knits are pastel or like a neutral or not neutral orange neutral like brownie tones or like yeah, natural yeah, yeah. sort of colors so yeah that's me yeah. uh favorite knit today by the way in case uh, you were wondering um <laughs> that's perfection. it's my favorite knit that I, thing that i've ever knitted um of all my knits be cool um cool all right so next thing was a segment i want to shoehorn in which is a <laughs> <laughs> baby photo dump. <laughs> what do you say, baby photo dump? It sounds like a. I just look shy everywhere. It's sounds... like photo. Of... No. And it's, I feel like don't say dump and baby in the same sentence. Fine, fine. Okay. Look, we both have been knitting some um, photo. We, we've both been knitting garments for friends who have young children and babies, and it would seem like a good opportunity to just like introduce or include some photos of some of the knits um, for other people that we've made. So I know you have that really cute Ingrid sweater. Yeah, I'm obsessed with the Ingrid sweater. I made this for um, my friend's baby. She's the only baby in, like, as in, out of all my friends, she's the only one who's had a baby. So the baby gets very spoiled and we love her. Um, and she turned two this week. And so we've got lots of photos here of her wearing her Ingrid sweater. I actually made it for her for her first birthday, but it still fits her. And I actually made it out of the Bendigo Woolen Mills just their regular yarn and the eight ply. I think it's just called eight ply classic or something. Um, and it's in the color raffia. Um, and it's a really interesting yarn, actually. It's a really, it's not super soft, I'll, I will say, but the reason I bought it is A, the color selection is epic and B, it's so hard wearing. So the reason I bought it in the first instance was because I think in one of the like Facebook groups that I'm part of that we always joke about, um, people were talking about it and giving their reviews on different yarns. Um, and they, many people had said in there that, you know, they've had great grandparents and stuff who've knitted them garments and they've been handed down several generations, washed heaps, and they've just held so well and they look like 
the day they first got them. Yeah. They just wear beautifully and they really soften up. And, you know, for a one, two-year-old, I think that's the perfect yard choice perfect. for when they're going to spill stuff on it. Um, I yeah. Initially, you were going to... We went and you were choosing some other yarn for it. And yeah. you chose and it's like beautiful soft organic oh. really plush wool it was so soft was and squishy it would have been a beautiful garment and it was in that classic like oat, oat color, color you know perfect for a two-year-old or one-year-old at the um, time it was just like it was it was beautiful but it just was the wrong thing and i'm glad yeah. you didn't because this one is just right like it's it's like a crepe spin yarn. it is yeah and it's really hardy and it, like it does what it needs to do i definitely rate it i mean and yeah, it's good value. Like, it was there those great. like big two hundred gram balls. Yeah, two hundred gram balls. Each ball has four hundred meters in it. Uh, incredible. Like you can knit an adult size jumper with three balls yeah. of that. Like it's wild, um, and it's so affordable. I can't off the top of my head remember exactly how much it is, but it's very very affordable. And so if you're in a bit of a budget and just want some good quality yarn, would highly recommend. Mm. Good, good. Um, I have a little seaside sweater which I think I showed in like my very first episode and that's gone to my friend who's now her little girl um and it's definitely it's still a bit big for her but she took photos in it just to humor me um so that's looking good and my niece has a little cotton cardigan that I finished and there's one more which I made a little while ago but it's about to go to its intended recipient so I'd show this oh my god it's so cute is a little anchors bonnet which is um just a petite knit baby pattern it's so cute and it's also like really small and i think i did it out of like 30 grams of yarn so is she, that is wild it's a good one for scraps um that's crazy so it's like so newborns nice. it's so i kind of wish that it was acceptable for adults to wear, to wear bonnets <laughs> Can make you an adult size yeah. bonnet. Can you, you imagine? imagine? I, I would. Anyway, <laughs> this is this is a great little. I think this is a good pattern if for kind of newborns and you want to just make something out of one really small special. Yeah, um, they'll wear it. It'll fit their head for maybe two weeks if you're lucky. But... We've um, talked about this, but I detest knitting baby things. Too many steps. I think too many step changes. I think the issue is you get to next steps quickly, and for you, where the limiting factor is changing steps. It yeah. is a problem. I just don't want to do it. I'd much rather. I just want to stock it at for ages if I could. Yeah. Or even if it's got a pattern, that's fine. As long as it's repetitive and I don't have to keep referring to the pattern. Yeah. So like this, um, this is my Friday sweater mini. Oh, I love it so it's much. I know I've seen this going. like a billion times. And I keep showing being like, space. I still haven't finished it no because worries. it's still such a chore to make. Um, and then I went out and bought another ball of yarn and I bought the wrong colour white. So... It's just like the thing that won't die. It's like the cockroach jumper. <laughs> Don't it's, say that. I love it's it. Cute. And I know you hate that. broken rib, but I'm obsessed. Like that texture is so cute. And um, also with the stripes, so cute. Yeah, it's looking great. I don't. I, um, I think I'll finish this soon, and I probably won't show it again because I think I just want to like. Actually, it's my niece's birthday soon anyway, so pressure is on to actually finish it. I'm glad I started when I did. I was like, I'm gonna be so organized, get this done early, and literally, it's taken me so long because it's been such a chore to make. Can I just say, I'm notorious for telling people, I'm going to make this for you for your birthday or for Christmas. And then it's like I start it on Christmas or the birthday. For example, the, what is it? Overlay, oh, the, overlay the overlay vest for my mum. It's still going, but progress is being made. Yeah. Which I guess we could talk about. Oh, let's talk about, whips. let's talk about some whips. Yep, yep. So, yeah, as I said, overlay I like how this turned into a finished object. Which one? The, my baby one. It is, it is. Going to turn um, into one. I'm, it's almost it's as good as a finished object. Um, this is the overlay vest progress. As you can see, I've made like a fair bit of progress. Um, the limiting factor is A, started a new whip this week. <laughs> um, and then B, it meant that I had to change steps. And you know I hate that. So, uh, but we did it. We did it yesterday. We, start, we changed steps. And um, we've just started binding off some of the neck. So we've just got the shoulders and then the back panel to go. Fly. I think it's going to fly because I think... Then, if it's for someone else, I will do it quite quickly. Like, I'll seam it and stuff. Yeah, I yeah, won't yeah. procrastinate it. But if it's seaming it for myself, I'll like, oh, sit on just let it sit for six months. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and then, yeah, obviously I finished this. So I was knitting this as well. Yes. Um, what else? Oh, I want to see your um, slip over. Do you have whips? Yeah, but I want to see this one first. Oh, okay. All right. So, my other whip is one that I started this week. Or actually last week. <laughs> which means... I'm really ashamed of how much progress I've made. It speaks... It's 
giving real procrastination from study energy. <laughs> it really is. I so I started this project because I couldn't knit the other one while yeah. studying. So yeah. I love knitting the overlay, but it's got so many balls of wool because it's got three colors and two of the colors also have mohair. So that's five balls of wool. You're not knitting with them all at the same time usually, but they get tangled, it's too much, right? Yeah. So I wanted like something mindless, but I also really wanted something to keep my core warm because you know, I want to feel about free me. in the arms. Uh, but real talk, I do want a sleepover. Also, I want something that I can wear on top of my um, shirts and tops at the hospital and then also be bare below the elbows for, you know, hygiene purposes with all the little Sick kids. Babies. Yeah, exactly. So I started making the, I should have looked it up. This is our second time recording and I didn't even look this up. I'm so sorry. I'm pretty sure it's the Stockholm slipover. It's the V-neck one by Petite Knit because apparently I only knit things by Petite Knit. Um, it's very simple. There's a lot of progress. Uh, I've done this in what, a week? This is a week. Yeah. Guys, I'm embarrassed. We don't, <laughs> let's not talk about, about how much I've done. Um, I'm knitting it with, I kept the little tagaroos. So I'm knitting it in, knitting for Olive in soft cognac, which is this merino. <laughs> yeah, nice. nice little warm yarn. And then in Izzy silk mohair in the color 7S which is this mohair. And, and as you can see, very match very well. This is very up brand What? What is going on? Um, I love to match things perfectly, like the one that I'm wearing. Mm. Uh, but unfortunately, soft cognac does not come with corresponding mohair from Knitting for Olive. And all the ones they do have are really warm toned browns. And I specifically wanted a cool toned brown because I thought it would be easier to style with a lot of the stuff mm. that I wear, particularly like that more, not formal, but like more, uh, it's not corporate either, but I don't know, just the kind of dress code mm. that I had at the hospital. Um, so I settled for this and it's created this beautiful fabric, which is almost a little bit mild because of that mixing. See if we can it's see so that. Interesting. I like, I'm so interested in this color. It's like, it's cooled it down. Like the mohair has cooled down the yeah. brown really nicely. It definitely has. It's but also, it's got like a mild look, yeah. It, yeah. It's and cool. the other thing I liked about it as well is, and we were talking about this oh, yeah. the other day, it's um like the core of the mohair is like a really dark color, like it's a black or brown. Um, most of the time when you buy mohair yarns, I feel like it's either white or a really pale color and then it really stands out against the contrast of whatever you're knitting it with. Most of the time when I'm knitting pastel things, that really doesn't matter because it just kind of blends in. Mm -hmm. But in something like this, I really didn't want that because I didn't want lots of little white flecks in it. So this darker color, it looks really weird in the ball. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't normally look at this and think that I want to buy it and gravitate towards it, but it served the purpose and it looks really good. Like the halo that it's created on this slipover is really nice. It feels really soft. Um, and I'd attribute that softness to the Izzy for sure, because yeah. again, knitting for Olive Merino, like it's a nice yarn and I like the, the colors, but I actually way prefer other merinos i think i feel like we're such snobs like having with all of the available australian merino i'm just looking at feeling this being like yeah we could do better right and it's kind of embarrassing right because so we paid an arm and a leg like we pay so much because everyone on youtube talks about knitting for olive and how it's like the best and, and it's like it's such a beautiful combination yeah with the and it's hyped so much that i was like oh my gosh sarah like we have to we pay have to the million dollars to get it dhl posted to australia and just do group orders and stuff but truly i think that we have as good slash much softer merinos here um and i actually have fun facts about that and i found out exactly why that is which we'll talk about later in the video uh, but nevertheless like love the garment still great great yarn just i'm excited to see how that comes up yeah which will probably be what next week? <laughs> yeah, I know I'm embarrassed. Hopefully not. Like I'm speeding through it too quickly and then I'm gonna have to start another study project. Study project. Speaking of study projects, I have a whip with some new yarn that I bought. Um so oh, I got some of the um Krempy Soul Baby Alpaca. And this is like the exact colour that I wanted. It is like this very, very like warm honey brown it's got these really really lovely flecks 
and kind of yellowy, maybe not quite green, but like yellowy tint to it. And it's like really, really, I just, mm. and it's 100% alpaca. It's perfection. It's. It, I can't tell you guys how soft this is. Like every time I'm in Make a Maker, I touch this and I want to purchase it and I need it for a garment, so nice. but then I don't have something to. Um, it's expensive, but whatever. Um, Worth it. Yeah, look, I, yeah, it's fine. And then I also, so I, then to hold with it because it feels a lot. So unfortunately, so the baby alpaca, it's super soft, but the trade-off is that it's going to pill a lot, which um, the heads up was given to me by our mate Liesl at Make a Maker. She was just like, if you're going to make Avoid. a garment, don't Avoid. make a full garment out of this. So I think, you know, making smaller things like, like a scarf or like, gloves or something perfect because you want those things to be really soft and they're not going to you know pill around the arms and that yeah. sort of thing yeah um so i bought some of this and then to hold with it i bought some of the isaya in the color 63 which is sort of yeah a light warm beige brown um pretty close actually i wasn't i wasn't focused on getting it super You're, close you know this is like my dream. Like, how, <laughs> I, imagine, I just want everything. And to I'm just like, like sure, fine. Because I kind of want, I just want that mohair yeah. for softness, for squishy, and to kind of like control the fiber and contain yeah. the feeling a bit. Totally. I am making a Sophie scarf. Groundbreaking. And I feel like I need to apologize. Like, I feel so not guilty, but I'm a bit like, oh, it's so boring and so basic. But I have made a combo of a Sophie scarf and penny glove set. Um, I made it at the end of last year and it's finally started getting warm enough, cold enough for me to wear them together. And I've worn them as a set, like with my coat wrapped up in a Sophie oh, scarf and dream. matching penny gloves. How cute. And I've done it in, <laughs> I've done it in a mohair, like with a mohair held with it. And it is the best. Like the garter stitch makes it so squishy and like they look really, they're both really simple garments and together, like it could be a bit matchy matchy. I love it. No, but you know what? It's only an issue I feel like if they're really big garments, like if you wore a matching beanie and a matching jumper, that would be a lot too much. But like the little subtle matchy like, matchy of like the scarf, scarf and the penny gloves. Oh, it's I so love good. It. And I was like, I want the same but in brown to match um, a particular coat of mine. And so I re very rarely, I think, go for a very specific, like I have a very clear scarf and a, in a very clear color, very clear project, very clear color that I want to emulate. But in this instance, that's just, I really wanted that specifically. So I'm not sorry that I'm just doing a Sophie <laughs> scarf is the long and short of that. I feel it's a bit boring, but I don't care. And you're making the chunky Sophie scarf. Right? I'm not doing the little one. I'm doing Yeah, one. you're doing the bigger one. I'm, oh, I'm basically just gonna knit until I run out of yarn. Like I'm gonna get to a size that I think is good and then I'll taper off. Cool. However good big plan. that happens to be. That's the thing I like about it. It's good for scraps. But also good for so nice. spending lots on alpaca. Um, nice. It's interesting what you said about like the, the light strand of the mohair. Yeah. So I was thinking that actually when you showed the actual ball, yeah, like you so can really see So this one has like quite that. a light core and you can see on this it's a lighter yarn so it doesn't matter as much but uh, it's probably not showing but you can see that that, I think that core kind of that. is coming through on that and being more evident. I think the mohair flattens the color variegation in the alpaca a little bit. Like it's l the, 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 the color of the alpaca is lost. You can still see it, but I get what you mean. It's, it's more not subtle. As, it's not as prominent. Yeah. But you know, the, if the trade-off is it not shedding and losing and pilling a truckload and it being softer with the mohair, I, ch I, ch I choose softness. So yeah, yes. Fair. Um, this is my study project and it's coming along well and I'm excited to wear it. Can I ask, how do you go with the study project of something that requires a lot of turning? Look, it will be a study, like, fine, but I'm anticipating... Oh, she hasn't started studying yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I shouldn't shame her. No, you should. Like, <laughs> my exam is next week and I need to stop casting on projects. Because this is the other thing, like, my key, like, my ideal study project is something like the slipover where you're yeah. just knitting in the round forevermore. And so... And I, that's what I need. And the closest, continuity. Yeah. The closest I could get was this. I just need to... <laughs> just need to study and um it's fine this is a knitting podcast we don't have to talk about thank you about let's it. not otherwise i'll spiral um oh. i just need to play my music sorry yeah. sorry i'm a 
Um, um, I have a great segue to Sigrid. Oh, yeah. Um, it's not this, but like also how cute does this match my outfit with like the... Wait, yeah, hang on. look at you in your pastel anyway, dreams. We'll just keep this like here just for a set purposes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so Sarah was just talking about how she's making a Sophie scarf and the penny gloves. <gasps> I actually also bought some yarn to make penny gloves as well. I've been wanting to do it for a while. Um, I like something fingerless so I can still use my phone at the tram stop. And I felt this yarn. Oh my gosh, where did I put it? I found it. Okay, okay so I bought this beautiful yarn um, from a shop in Melbourne. Obviously, we're not traveling anywhere at the moment. <laughs> it's by Woolfolk and it is the tinned yarn. I don't know if that's how you say it, but I'm hoping so. And the thing that sold me on this is it is the softest yarn I have felt in a very long time. You can feel it. It's like my brain can't compute how soft this is. It is so absurdly soft. So I just cannot deal. I was thinking if I'm going to make penny gloves, I'm happy to splash out. Like I want to get like something really luxurious. It could be cashmere. I don't more. care. I don't need that much. It's going to be perfect. So I'm like touching all the yarns in the eight ply section, trying to find the perfect one. I was like, this is it. This is so soft. And then I was like, hmm, what's it made out of? 100% merino. What? What do you mean? How is this so soft? So I asked the um, people in the shop, how come it was so soft? And um, one of the people did a little bit of research. And what we found out is merino, basically most merino yarns will have like the little fibers within the yarn. They can be different thicknesses in terms of their diameter. Um, and most of the time, a good proportion of those will be over 30 microns in thickness. Mm. And that's why merino usually feels like, not usually, but like it, it can feel a little bit rougher in some yarns compared to others. In this particular yarn by Woolfolk, they only include fibers that are less than 17.5 microns in diameter. Um, I and feel the way that they. so luxurious. It is. So that's why it's so soft. It's because it's a really, really fine fiber within the yarn, um, which is why they said on the thing that it's 100% Obis 21 Ultimate Merino wool. So Obis 21 is a type of sheep. And oh. yeah, which yeah. makes sense makes now sense. because makes I remember sense. seeing an Obis pattern and it had a little sheep on it. Anyway. Yeah. Besides the point, I guess one concern that one may have, which totally fair, is like the ethics and stuff about how they're getting this yarn and breeding out sheep. But um, done our research and it is ethical and that is why their yarn is a little bit, quite a bit pricier. Mm. Um, but I think it's worth it when you're not having to buy a whole heap for a whole garment. Again, the trade-off is this is more likely to pill compared to something that's a bit more rustic feeling. Mm. Um, but again, they're gonna be gloves, so should be fine. Whatever. Um, yeah, I just thought that was fascinating. But, Is it Australian? Uh, no, it's not Australian Merino. It's from Patagonia. Nice. But that is why... Because um, I feel like Australian... This is us being a, like Australian snobby. yarn snobs. Is because the sheep here have nicer Merino because it's they can't get too hot. Well, yeah. they Yeah, it's a hot climate, so they don't need the super coarse fibres. Where if you, whereas if you go to... Some of the more like Nordic countries, they tend to be coarser fibers, more rustic feeling, much warmer, um, but not as soft. And it I obviously it depends on the project and what you want out of it. Yeah. But yeah, so that's why. And um, Sarah and I are going to the Benigo Wool and Sheep Show, which is going to be sometime in July. Uh -huh. Yeah, very excited. We'll talk about that you know, when we get to that time. But um, last year when we went, they had like lots of sheep out and like the cross sections of what their fibers look like and like how many microns and stuff. So it was really cool to see in practice about like what that feels like and the differences. And it was cool to learn when we were there what that meant as well. Uh, so yeah, just yeah. some fun facts. <laughs> um, let's talk about, let's talk about Sheep Show. Oh um, yeah, let's do it. So last year we went for the first time to the Australian Sheep and Wool Show, which runs in Bendigo, which is in regional Victoria. It's maybe two-ish hours from where we live. And it runs over three days. It's massive. And it's great because it's got, um, I feel like it's got something for everyone. Like they it's sell so lots good. and lots of yarn there. They're selling fleece there. But then it's obviously in um, a big sheep region of Australia. I mean, I think the entire of Australia is sheep region. But there's lots of people who come to buy rams and buy like fleece 
um, I think more wholesale and yeah, a lot of like livestock selling and a lot of livestock being auctioned and stuff. Um, there's also like uh, the sheepdog trials. The sheepdog thing is so cute because there's like the learning sheepdogs that are still quite young and still a little bit naughty and still learning. <laughs> and it's so watch. cute because you can see them so excited to be there and trying so hard to contain themselves and then, you know, slipping up now and again and it was really cute. Letting the sheep get away. And yeah. then they've got like the absolute pros who can just round up the sheep real easy. And yeah. it's just, it was really incredible to watch. So last year, I went on quite a whim. Sarah was sort of already in Bendigo visiting some family. And... Um, she told me that she was going. I had done some research and I was so jealous and really wanted to go, but I was working that day at like 4 p.m. So I ended up going just for the day and catching an early train from Melbourne and then catching the train back straight to you my had, like, workplace. All your work stuff yeah, I had my scrubs in my bag. Like I was ready to <laughs> change as soon as I got to the hospital. Um, and it was so worth it. But we were like, there was a time crunch. There was just so much we wanted to see, and I was not expecting that. And was, I didn't expect it to be as big as it was. And we were like, oh. we had to get through the day because there was it was just. We insane. walked into one of the areas, and it was just yarn stalls. And I thought I had died and gone to heaven because there were all these beautiful sellers of yarns that I had seen like in little amounts mm. in the normal places that we sell, but we had the actual store owners there showing us so much yarn. what they had and their favorite things and all the other things that they were selling. And then there were also, I mean, I've got my little moccasins here. <laughs> they we also had like, actually yeah, so good. and they're so soft. And like the guy who sold them, it was so sweet. He was like, he was saying, oh, I really didn't think it's only day one. I really didn't know that I'd sell so much. And so my family's at home right now cutting and stitching up new ones for day two. <laughs> and I had bought like the last one in this color and they just happened to be in my size, which was just such a win. But yeah, he said, oh, everyone's at home stitching up new ones by hand, like trying really hard to make them for day two, which I was thinking, oh man. It, yeah, it, it was, was busy. Hectic. It was busy. There was a lot of people there. Um, and we're going to go again this year. We are so hyped. Very excited. I'm going to go and actually book accommodation for the night because I just want to really make a weekend out of it. Um, I've also somehow managed to convince, and when I say convince, I was talking very gleefully about how much I enjoyed this and now a whole bunch of my friends and some family are coming who don't even knit, they're just so hyped just because I was hyped no. by what I saw. <laughs> they just wanted the energy that I had after that. <laughs> so yeah, and Sarah almost was going to bail on me and guess what she did? <laughs> So I might have changed my international flight so that I can attend the sheep and wool show. Um, <laughs> when she told me this, <laughs> I died because <laughs> I literally, she told me in her devastation when she realized she had accidentally booked flights, not knowing that it was that weekend and she was missing out by like a day from the Bendy Grimmel and Sheep show. And I was, to be fair, gutted. equally gutted because I know as much as I'm going to have family and friends there joining me, Sarah is the only person who understands how much time I want to spend at each of these stalls I and how on the same I am. level of yeah yeah because I'm just gonna feel guilty if I'm spending too long looking at stitch markers <laughs> my mum's gonna be yeah. like not mad but she's gonna be sad she's gonna be like let's go look at the sheepdogs and yes but I also want to look at my sh yeah. stitch markers by Cat spends Tinkles. an inordinate <laughs> amount of time choosing socks totally <laughs> so I'm very so sad. yeah at first I was like look it seems silly like that's a shame whatever. But then um, I realized I'd been a bit rash in booking this flight and for another, like, I was, <sighs> I just, I was like, look, there's going to, there's, for many reasons, it might be better for me to move it. So I just called and just to sort of scope how much it would be to move the flight. And then to move it two days was not very much money. And I was like, do you know what, for the purpose of not like, I'd have to like move a lot of work shifts around and make a lot of asks of people at work that felt like conversations that I didn't want to have and then I was like look for the price of that and I also get to go to the totally. wall show <laughs> I moved my flight so um now I get to go so good I also think Sarah's um emotions around the whole thing were very complicated which I thought was quite funny because I think she was battling with the internal shame of <laughs> being upset that she was missing the Bendigo wool and sheep show but then she was also going to Mexico and she didn't know how come she was still so sad and upset which was understandable to me but I think you know to many people they wouldn't understand that and so I don't think there, her, you would be the only yeah. person who could sympathize with me yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm having massive FOMO about the Bendigo Sheep and Wool show so I'm, yeah look anyway I'm not saying I moved it to go I'm just saying it was a strong contributing factor. I feel like she did I'm just I'm just saying it could be a contributing factor 
I but saw the devastation, like when you realized that you couldn't moments, go. You were talking about it, you're like, I'm gonna have the best time. I'm like, I'm gonna miss now. <laughs> you but would be in more. Mexico crying into your like tacos. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. The tacos can wait. The sheep cannot. Um, <laughs> so we're going to the sheep and wool show. It's gonna be great. Um, the last thing maybe we can talk about is acquisitions and I feel like I'm concerned about acquisitions we will get at Sheep and Wool Show but yes. we already got another one another recent one which holy moly was a big one it was a big one um so you guys might know Knitting Traditions on YouTube uh her name the lady who runs it her name's Inga um and I only got into her YouTube channel because of Sarah. She used to watch it while relaxing and it was, and I was like, look, look at this. Man, it was absolutely my vibe. And so I've been watching it as well. And I've never really been into color work knitting, but Inga has made me want to get into color work knitting. I love like all the yarns that she uses, how rustic it looks. And I love her color work. And there was a particular cardigan that I was obsessed with. And it was the Mary Wallen chestnut cardigan that I loved. Um, but Inga talks a lot in that about how like making it an in the round pattern mm. when it's actually designed as a flat garment is quite complicated. And I know I'm the kind of person who doesn't like changing steps and gets quite frustrated and put th puts things down. Anyway, I messaged my friend Sarah and told her, oh my gosh, I really want to make this and turned out it was on Sarah's list. So we decided that we were going to do it together. Make splurge. We hadn't really set a day or time of when we were going to go buy this yarn and start it but we knew it was on our list and then we just happened to be at this store picking up other things mind you um some click and collect orders and all that sort of stuff and while we were there they had the yarns and it's a rare opportunity that we're both in that shop it's like a good 40 minutes from where we live and we spontaneously just thought let's do it yeah let's yeah let's we just get like, it all let's the crack. time is now no time like the present let's just let's just do it I have to say, when we went there and Sarah said, let's just do it, like my heart started racing <laughs> because I wasn't... It seemed like a big... It was a big job. I, I wasn't emotionally prepared because my stash is out of control and I was about to add like $300 worth of yarn more to my existing stash. Um, I'm trying to get through my stash. It's a big expense. It's a lot of work. I was intimidated, but it was... But I've just been... I've been sitting on this for so long. Like, um, I do a bit of... Uh, upholstery work on the side and I had come into um I'd, I'd done a big job and I got some money like from that and I was like I know what I want to spend this money on and it was this <gasps> was it from that job that yeah, you did yeah yeah oh I, that's I did, so I love that I did this restoration on a oh god I sound such a like I know what I'm talking about um a lady paid me an inordinate amount of money I think to restore this like vintage 60s art. Okay Sarah says it's an inordinate amount of money but she also got a quote for how much to get it. No, no places else, places no were refusing do. to do the repair um and also like I don't know it's a lot of work. Like, like it wasn't easy. is very expensive for a reason I suppose is because it's really hard. And, and it's a difficult like it's not a skill that everyone has so like I think that was totally fair. Yeah. So and I've been doing a little bit of upholstery and I was like, look, no one else will do it. So I'll give it a whirl. And I did it. And then she gave me some money and I was like, great, I'm going to trick myself. I wanted to buy this. And then I pressured you into buying it too. At it the same time. Look, she, you know, twist my arm. And didn't take, <laughs> it didn't take too much for me to um, bend. Yeah. And actually I'm really grateful that that shop stopped so many different similar yarns in different colors because the Murray Wallen is lovely. It is also absurdly expensive, like debilitatingly so. It hurt my soul how oh, much it was going to cost lovely. us. These so are 25 gram balls. 25 gram balls and they're $17.50 like Australian, which is a lot. So Inga mentioned how she had bought like the whole lot of yarn and the pattern um, at like a similar to like Bendigo, I guess, like some sort of wool fair. Yeah. But this is all from the UK and with shipping and everything, it was just yeah. going to be absurdly Sorry. expensive. So when we were there they have like a lot of this kind of like rustic feeling yarn at this particular store so we compared like the colors and stuff and when i say like we subbed out things like we weren't su we were subbing out colors and they were still very nice oh yeah yeah, yeah. so like, we were like... still very nice fibers yeah it's just not this brand that's really expensive so 
There were some colours we couldn't find a duplicate for. So yeah. those were the ones that we said we'll pay and get the original because we didn't want to compromise on like the shade and the hue. So we've bought a few colours like the dark apple and the quince and the russet. And there's one more which we need to buy online because they didn't have any stock. It's sorted. It's Lovely. Right. Like really, really beautiful. We couldn't find ones that were close enough to match these. So we're like, these ones we will not skimp out on. But there was plenty of them that we could find much more affordable alternatives. So, so for example, that. like the colour raw in Mary Wallen is very similar to this particular shade. And this is a uh, Le Biche Le Bouche, Le Petit Lambs Wool. So it's 100% Lambs Wool, also from the UK. And I think you needed like five balls of the small Mary Wallen. Mm. So, but this, because it's just got better yardage and it's a bigger ball, it ended up being much cheaper and it's also really nice quality. So like this is a really, really lovely yarn and it's still spectacularly cheaper proportional to the Marie Wallen. Um, so really happy that we could find a few dupes. Totally. And I guess like if anyone else was interested in trying this sort of sweater, oh, cardigan, um, there's also a brand called Jamison and Smith that mm. does a really, really affordable, like that one's truly affordable. I think it's about $6 Aussie a ball. Yeah. Um, so you could still achieve it. It was just not quite the color palette. Like the match of the colors just wasn't quite there. And this is definitely going to be a bit of a technical challenge leading this up. So worth the splurge. Also, the other one I wanted to show you was this color. Um, this was sort of our dupe for wood from Mary Wallen. And as you can see, it's got like all this cool color variation in it. This one is a little bit different. This is um, Le Cashmere and Lambeau. I'm so sorry. This is from Biche and Bush as well. I do speak French, but I always feel a bit poncy if I do like an the actual accent. French. <laughs> I don't want to do that. So, um, I think it's very good for that. Um, look at this color though. Isn't it a, I'm, I, this might not be the first time I, that might not be the last time I used this. It's gorgeous. It's so, so nice. And like the fiber, I did check it's because I was like concerned that like mixing fibers might be weird in a color work, mm. but the actual like fiber, how it knits up and the size of like the gauge, yeah, I suppose, it's, 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 it's like a perfect match. So it's going to work beautifully within our jumper and this is our little taste of luxury in it as well. This is like the, it's called the dark red brown, um, lambs all from Scotland. That's nice. It's very um, cute. But yeah, so we, it was good to be able to like find a few extras like this. This, this one is the Le Petit Lambs wool in red brown. And that's like, it. it's take, just taped up as well. It's just so nice. Just and really so, like, together, it. everything is just looking so good. So, we've got one more colour to get. But, oh, the last colour is the uh, lime flower yeah, colour, and it's bright, also, right? yeah, it's like a slightly lighter version of this one. Um, and it's also the Mary Wallen original one. That was one we did. Very happy yeah. with how it's looking. Oh my gosh, it's going to look so good. It's so good. It's so good. So yeah, um, that was a fun day. Um, and I don't know when I'm going to cast this on. Maybe soon. I oh, know I have to finish a few things first. But I'm just going to wait till Sarah's like ready because... I think you're going to until Sarah works out how to do the steeping. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean also probably yes. <laughs> No, I'm going to wait till Sarah's ready because I should be studying, so I should be slowing down. And also... Uh, yeah, it'll be a post-exam thing for me. Totally. Home stretch. Um, cool. Anything else? To, any other... Anything else you want to talk about? I do not have any more. That is all my I've stuff. got one fabric acquisition. You didn't talk about your sock. I can't talk about the sock. The Ooh. sock is going to wait till next, next time. time. <laughs> I'm not quite ready. I've, I've decided to talk about the sock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The talk was too fresh. I thought I was. <laughs> no, no. The April socks in June. We'll, anyway, we'll talk about it in the next bit. <laughs> um, I just want—I've got one fabric acquisition which I really love, and I haven't—I've been really good and not acquired fabric in a while. Obviously, because I've been too busy buying, spending all my money on yarn. But I. Um, had been eyeing off this Merchant and Mills fabric for a long, long time. Um, Merchant Mills fabric is like everything I could ever want. They just do like great neutrals and checks. Like Sarah loves charms. Um, this is not a revelation, but um, this is um, a. But yeah, so Merchant and Mills are really hard to get in Australia. You can order from the UK, but their postage are like sixty pounds or something. And so it's like, <sighs> it's just it's just impossible. Um, you like, know what though, I am going to the UK next year, so yeah. I mean, I we can write a wish list of I've, all the I've things. I've got a few people who are going to or from the UK. 
Um, but they probably would be less tolerant to haul back heaps and heaps and heaps of fabric and yarn. <laughs> anyway, so I, but there is a shop, I think they're based out of Sydney, but mainly online called um, The Little Cloth, Cloth Merchant or something. And they have some Merchant and Mills. And I've been eyeing this off and I was just like, nope, I'm going to treat myself, I'm going to buy it. So I bought this cotton and it's really, really light. It's quite sheer. And it's I, gorgeous. it's just, it's just, it's like just warm Sarah my in a fabric. Brown neutral heart. Oh, it's, it's literally like, <laughs> anyway, we won't so, talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, it's so I've started making a dress in this, which I really, really love. And I'm excited to wear that one. So this is my Merchant and Mills fabric. Mm, I've never had bad Merchant and Mills fabric. Like all the things I've made, they're so luxe, good quality stuff. I'm excited to see how it turns out. Because every time Sarah wears a new creation, I'm, I die over it. So... I'm excited. I'm excited for you. So, yep. Um, I just need to stop studying, finish studying, finish my exam so I can do what I really want to do with my life, which is just craft. I know. Honestly, I've never been so excited to finish exams <laughs> for the purpose of being able to just watch movies and craft oh. without the guilt. Yeah, I would be. I, I'm essentially doing all this stuff. I would just like to do a guilt free. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> that's it. Um, but I think that's everything. Um, I think so. Thank you so much to everyone who watched our last video. It was um, really lovely. Everyone just, there was lots of really lovely comments. Um, um, there was this nice lady in South Africa who um, made this like lovely comment about like Southern Hemisphere knitting. And then there was a really, uh, and there was some nice comments about my sock problems. Like someone made some very helpful comments about that. Oh, that's so nice. I don't think I've seen those comments yet. Sure. I've, I've been doing a bit of reading of them and they're it's so, really they're so nice. I'm just so chuffed that other people like actually like our stuff or, you know, watch it. So, so thank yes. you so much. Thank you everyone. And um, yeah, if you've got anything you would like to add, comment, advise, we'd be very delighted to hear it. So please feel free. Sounds great, guys. Thanks. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Oh, my God. She's so not chill. <laughs> She's not chill. She's not chill. She's not chill. We're being fussy. Night time. Day time. Night time. Day time.